Hi, welcome to our chapter eight review where we are discussing confidence intervals. All right. Read through the content, kitties are awesome, information, timer, pause, let's go. A, B, D, E. Here come those solutions. So, members at a popular fitness club currently pay $40 per month in membership fees. The owner of the club wants to raise the fee to 50, but is concerned that some members will leave the gym if the fee increases. To investigate, the owner plans to survey a random sample of the club members and construct a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all members who would quit if the fee was raised to $50. So this club owner has had some statistics because I don't think most people would do that. Uh, so of all members who would quit if the fee was raised to $50. A, explain the meaning of a 95% confidence in the context of the study. So just a quick sentence here. If many samples of members were selected and many 90% and many confidence intervals were constructed, about 95% of the intervals would capture the true proportion of all members who would quit. That's simple. B, after the owner conducted the survey, he calculated the confidence interval to be 0 0.18 plus or minus 0 0.075. Interpret this interval in the context of the study. So we do a smidge of math here. And I'm going to go ahead and find that interval. Let's set myself up. Cool. So now we have this interval from 0 0.105 to 0 0.255. And we are ready to interpret the interval in context of the study. So I would be 95% confident that the uh, interval 0 0.105 to, 2 point, to 0 0.255 captures the true proportion of all members who would quit if the fee was raised to $50. Most of that information I got straight from the question and the given information. Here you can see it. If those of you who are visual people, I probably should have pulled this up as I was reading. Ta-da, same information. Moving on to question C, according to the club's accountant, the fee increase will be worthwhile if fewer than 20% of the members quit. According to the interval from part B, so I'll write that out one more time. That's ah, cool. So he wants to know that he's saying that club's accountant is like, we're going to be great if only 20% or fewer of our people quit. But if you increase the fee according to these, you know, in this confidence interval, any more than 20% and we could be in the red, right? Well, look at this, 0 0.20 is directly on that interval. Uh-oh. So according to that interval, can the owner be confident that the fee increase will be worthwhile? No, we really can't because 20% is very much on that interval. In fact, it's like smack dab in the middle. So we really don't know. We would have to be a lot more comfortable with, you know, losing 26% or less. So that means we've got to finagle our fees or work on, owner, you know, membership retention. Well, I don't know. I'm continuing on on a story that doesn't even really exist. This is a stats question. Sorry, guys. I got sidetracked. <laughs> but yeah, so that's all it is. So here's that wrap up. No, there are plausible values in the interval above 0 0.20, 20%. So the owner cannot be confident that the true proportion is less than 0 0.20. So I would not be confident to go ahead and go through with that membership fee raising. You want some practice interpreting confidence intervals. I just gave you one confidence interval right here to practice. Why not practice a few more? We've got a quick con session right there you can practice. And moving on to question D. Uh, one of the conditions for calculating confidence intervals in part B is that we checked our conditions. So we may have made assumptions about conditions being checked and we checked our um, N times P is greater than or equal to 10, blah, blah, blah. So we had an assumption that everything was done because they just gave us the confidence interval. But why is it necessary to check this step? So they have a really good just answer right here. So I'm going to read it out. We check this condition to make sure that P hat 
as an approximately normal distribution, which allows us to use a standard normal distribution to finding those Z critical values used on this interval. So you want more conditions on, uh, need more practice on checking conditions. There's your information. There's also a unit exam here. Three different QR codes there, right? Sorry, unit exam here. And moving on to the lesson, you can PDF through for the questions or you can go to your assignments, multiple choice for your response, screenshots, com, whatever you want to do. See you guys later.